Okay, electric trucks. I've been gonna do one on these for quite a while. I used to work for the post office. I worked there about, I don't know, five or six years. Uh, and there's quite a bit of a talk about using electric trucks. And there's a lot of things about electric trucks that there's just a bunch of crap out there that just aren't true. And I thought I'd try to dispel some of that stuff with my meager research abilities. Let's take the Class 8 truck to start with. That's, that's the big one, 80,000 pounds gross vehicle weight. Usually the tractor, from the numbers I get, they weigh about 17,000 pounds. And that's for a conventional diesel. And what we've heard a lot of is people saying, well, yeah, the battery's going to increase the weight of the truck by two or two and a half times and all this. Oh, no, Jesus, give me a break. Uh, none of that's really true. The tractor for a diesel truck, like I said, 17,000 pounds, if you have a battery that'll move you about 500 miles, that battery is going to weigh about 10,000 pounds. But consider this. I don't need fuel. Fuel is about uh, 300 gallons of fuel is about uh, one ton. So I'm going to take kind of an average here and throw this in. I'll say half of the fuel because as the fuel is used, it weighs less and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, you're going to have about a thousand pounds in fuel in a diesel truck. That's going to take a thousand pounds off that 10,000. Then I'm going to eliminate the engine and transmission, which is going to be about 4,000 pounds. Okay, now we're, that electric truck only weighs 5,000 pounds more. The drive for the electric truck, they're not going to be the big differentials you see in there. The motors are mounted on assemblies that are, are essentially the, it's not a differential, but it's a, a drive assembly with the motor mounted integrally to the uh, axles. So there's going to be two of those. There's usually four motors in these things. And my thoughts are that you're looking at maybe 5,000 pounds. Maybe. Could be a little less than that. So 80,000 pounds gross vehicle weight that they can legally haul. If it's electric, they allow you 2,000 more pounds, one more ton. So that brings the weight penalty down a little bit more to uh, 3,000. So when we're looking at, at these trucks, they're not, <laughs> they're not that much heavier on the good side. Batteries located very low in the chassis makes the truck more stable. Operation of the truck, a little different operation here than a diesel powered truck. When you go up a hill in an electric vehicle, it takes more power. When you go up a hill in a diesel vehicle, it takes more power, a lot more power, especially if it's a truck. It's a lot more power to go up a hill and it goes down. Same with true electric or diesel. When you reach the top of that hill, and let's say you go up this hill over a pass, and it's, you know, a thousand feet above sea level on one side and a thousand feet above sea level on the other. When you go up that hill in the diesel, you're going to use a lot of power. When you go down the other side, you're going to use a lot less power than the diesel. You'll still be using power, but not very, not anywhere near as much. With the electric, when you get to the top of the hill and start going down, you start recharging the battery. 
instead of brakes being used or uh, the Jake, the vehicle is actually recharging the batteries as it goes down. All that weight that you pulled up is pushing you back down the other side and you are using that to control the speed of the truck and it's recharging the battery. You may get up to 90% of the power that you used coming up, you know, excess power you used coming up the hill uh, above and beyond what you'd be on flat. You may get 90% of that back. And I've actually tested this in a car and it was fairly close. So you're getting power back and you're not using the brakes. Now, I know a lot of the, the trucks have jakes and that, that makes a lot of difference. The brakes uh, on these trucks are not being used hardly at all. In fact, they probably don't use them at all. Because every time that truck slows down or stops, you're using regenerative power that puts power back into the batteries and does not use the brakes. Remember, brakes are just something to bleed off energy. Uh, they create friction and make the, uh, they make heat, a lot of heat, or they dissipate a lot of heat. So when you're looking at trucks, isn't it possible that uh, a truck makes a lot of sense? Uh, electric. One other thing. When you decide to use an electric truck, with, I'll take the post office, and they have a lot of trucks that have specific routes. In fact, most of their trucks have specific routes that they do every day. And uh, take those little delivery Jeep looking things that they got, that they've had, oh God, some of those things are 50 years old. Those vehicles, if they're electric, you buy a battery for the vehicle that matches the load, the time you're, you know, the distance you're going to go. So you figure out the distance you're going to go in that truck, you add 15 or 20 percent more uh, to it, plug the silly thing in at the end of the day, because these things don't generally run 24 hours a day. There's usually a around, well, not even an eight hour run, but depending on the, on what route you have, could be that long. Uh, when you're done with it, you bring it back to the facility and plug it in. When it's plugged in, it's gonna charge up. The, the biggest expense you have at that point is many, any upgrades of electrical service you may need for the building that you go in there. But you're actually just gonna tailor these trucks the battery sizes of these trucks to what you need uh, for the job. And it costs one heck of a lot less money to charge those silly things, especially if you are charging it at your facility. If you're charging it like with the Tesla superchargers, those are pretty expensive to charge. And it comes closer to diesel or gas prices. But if you're using electric and you're using it direct from the utility, and most of the time these things will be charging at night where sometimes there's lower rates on the utilities, you can charge it there and save a pile of money there. Love to hear any comments you have. I'm sure some of you think I'm absolutely looney tune, but I'll try to deal with them as they come in. Okay, that's it on this one.